Hi, I'm Enoch Sears. I'm the founder of Business of Architecture, and I'm an architect business consultant, which basically means I help architects build a fulfilling, profitable, and impactful architecture practice that doesn't get in the way of being an architect. Today, we're going to be looking at a very important financial tool for your architecture firm, and that is the 13-week rolling cash flow forecast. Cash is like oxygen in a business, and just as you would quickly die if you ran out of oxygen, your business will quickly die if it runs out of cash. And so we need to be able to see what is the cash coming in and what is the cash going out on a week-by-week basis. That's what we use the 13-week cash flow statement for. This is especially important in times of constricted cash flow or in time of a potential recession or down market like we are right now as I'm recording this. So let's hop in. I've prepared a special Google spreadsheet. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial about how to use this document. You'll find the link to access the spreadsheet right below this video. Let's hop in. All right, so here's our spreadsheet, and I'm going to describe how this works. So this is a Google Doc, and to be able to get access to it, you need to click on File, and then there's two things you can do here. Number one, you can make a copy. So you can click Make a Copy, and it will copy a copy of this document that you can edit into your own Google Drive. The second way to get access to this is to click uh, to hover over download and then you can choose any one of these options to download the file in any one of these formats. So the way this is set up is here in the first tab we have the actual 13 week cash flow statement. The second tab we have a spreadsheet that's going to allow you to identify when your expenses happen throughout the month and then lastly this last tab is what to do if we encounter a, sh a cash shortfall. So first thing first, let's take a look at the 30-day expenses. The first thing you're going to have to do is understand when you're spending money in your firm. So I have this divided up into fixed expenses, annual expenses, and variable expenses. So what we do is we list our expenses over here on the left-hand side. If you need to insert more rows, you can do that. Across the top, we have the days are numbered 1 through 31. And so what we do is just on each day, we put in the expenses we expect to incur on a typical month in that day. So say for instance, on the second, let's say payrolls due, our owner draw, our staff payroll. So we're gonna say 12,000 plus 8,000, that would be 20,000 is due on the second of every month, right? And so we can do that with all the expenses we have in the firm. SaaS expenses, which would be software as a service. We have expenses like QuickBooks, G Suite if we use it, Dropbox, any cloud services, software, basically any fixed expenses that we know that we're gonna to have to spend throughout the month, we want to get them here on the spreadsheet, and it will calculate them up here on the top in terms of how much money we're spending every single day, all right? So getting our heads clear about this is going to be important as we move over to the cash flow uh, forecast. Now, I've also added something here for annual expenses. So you may have annual expenses in your firm. Perhaps you pay annually for your Revit licenses or your Revit seats. So what I like to do and what I counsel my clients to do is divide up that payment into 12 months so that every single month they can set aside money to pay for that expense. And they put that in a separate account that's specifically designated for that purpose. So when that expense comes along, they don't have a huge debit that comes out of the cash flow. It's already been accounted for. So that's what you can add here onto the spreadsheet. And you can just say that on the first of every month, you're going to disperse that money into a separate savings account. You'll also have variable expenses. These might be things like marketing expenses, hourly contractors or outsourced workers, maybe even printing fuel. Anything that's not the same from month to month, if it's going to vary, you're going to want to estimate that down here under variable expenses, and it's going to total that for you, and it's going to include that in the total up here for the total expenses. Now, if you have some of these expenses that are paid for in a credit card, of course, you know what's going to happen is you're actually going to have a lump sum payment that's going to be due on a certain day to pay the credit card. Now, what I suggest you do is you just factor that in when you come over here to the 13-week cash flow statement so that you put that down here under credit card payments, which is down here. So now let me explain how the 13-week cash flow statement works. First of all, at the top here, there's a link to this particular video. Down here at the bottom, there's a link to a free training if you want to find out how to build a practice that doesn't get in the way of your craft and success as an architect. You can visit this link down here on the bottom. All right, so what we have here, the way this is organized is by week, one, two, three, all the way to 13. The first thing you're going to want to do is figure out when the start of your cash flow rolling forecast begins. So in this case, I'm going to start it on March 29th, and it's going to update these dates up here at the top. So for instance, if I change this to April 5th, you can see it changes the dates. So this would be the Sunday of every week. So I'm going to stick it back over here to March 29th. Now, in addition to that, there's a last column here 
under actual that we're gonna use to compare our projections on a weekly basis, and I'm gonna explain how that works in a minute. The first thing we need to do is we need to enter in our cash on hand after we get the date. So our cash on hand will be all the cash we have in our bank account. So this is the cash the business actually has at the moment from any account that we'd be able to pay expenses with right here. So I'm gonna say, let's say it's twenty twenty two thousand dollars Now this is automatically gonna be pulled over here. Anything that's in blue is automatically calculated. You don't need to touch those cells. So you can see here that if I change this to, let's say we start out with $40,000, it's gonna automatically update everything. So let's bring it back down to 20,000. So we're starting out with $20,000 in the bank. And first thing we need to do is figure out what are gonna be our receipts for next week, which will be week one. And then after that, we have to figure out what's the cash we're gonna pay out next week. And that's basically gonna give us our cash position at the end of the week. So when we look at cash receipts, these would be things like cash sales. Now a cash sale is money collected when the sale's made. So for instance, if you close a deal on a contract and you're able to collect a deposit at that time, that would be counted as a cash sale. So let's say that next week we, we expect a client to go ahead and they're gonna give us a deposit of $5,000 or a retainer or something of the sort. So I'm gonna put that in here as an estimated cash sale. Now that doesn't include payment for invoices. That's gonna go on this line right here for collections. So if we're expecting some money to be paid to us because of an invoice we've previously issued, we're gonna put that money right here. So let's just assume that we're gonna have 14,000 plus five, that's gonna be 19,000. There's also space here for reimbursements. These would be things that would be in reimbursing you for pass-through expenses, like consultant expenses, printing expenses, and then other loans or other cash injections that you have, this is income. So when I say loans, if you get financing or you have a line of credit and you need to add money into the business, that's where you put that in right here. So let's say that we were gonna pull $500 from a credit line or $5,000, we'd put that there, all right? For now, I'm gonna take that back out again. So this will give us our total cash available before cash out. Now we have to figure out what are our expenses during that week. So that's where this spreadsheet that we just created can help us out to figure out, okay, the last week of March, what do we expect to pay? So let's assume that we're gonna, we have a consultant invoice that's due in the amount of $3,300. We have utilities in the amount of $500, which gives us a subtotal of $3,800. Now let's also say that we know that our credit card bill is gonna be due and on average that's about, we expect it to be about $3,200 for the month. In addition, we can add any capital purchases here that we expect to have. I like to counsel my clients to set aside money for in every paycheck to pay the income tax and the taxes of the owners of the business. And so we do that to cover any income tax that may happen because of withdrawals or disbursements. And so it may be simply to take you know 10% or something out of the total cash receipts and set it aside in a separate bank account. So that's what that is here. This right here, this $2,000 reserve and or escrow, this would be basically if you're building up a reserve account, hopefully you're saving a little bit every month to save for a rainy day, that's where you're pulling out the money here. So we can see here in week one, we expect to pay out $10,900 in cash, which leaves us in a cash position of $28,100. Now we're doing pretty good because you can see we started in a cash position of 20,000. By the end of the week, we're up to 28,100. So this is a sign of a healthy business. We're saving for reserves, we're saving for taxes, and we're making extra money. So things are going pretty well. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing for week two, week three, week four, all the way through to week 13. And this is gonna start to tell us a story. So you can see here that in week two, it's taking what was left from week one, that becomes the starting cash balance for week two. Then we add in any cash receipts we expect to have, and we subtract out any cash that we expect to pay out. So at the end of week two, we can see, oh, we're dropping down here because we had to do payroll. We had to do rent, we had to do payroll expenses, and so we're back down to a cash position of $25,330. Now, you can see with this particular example that right here in week five, we have a problem. Right here, we're actually negative. All the money in our bank account, our cash accounts has been exhausted and we're going into negative territory. That's because we're only collecting 5,000. If we collected 10,000 here, then you could see we could last longer. And right here, we only, you know, it lasts us until week six when we go negative, right? So this is how the 13 week cash flow forecast works, which you wanna do this on a weekly basis. It's, it's gonna take a little bit of time to set up, but after you get this done, it's gonna take 20 minutes maximum, 15 to 20 minutes every single week to be able to update this. I recommend if you're a managing partner or an architecture firm owner that you do this for a while to get the feel for it. Um, then you can, of course, this is something the CFO would do in a larger firm, 
or you can have your bookkeeper and your accountant do it eventually. At the end of every week, so after week one pass, what we're going to do is we're going to update this. That means we're going to come in here, we're going to do the actual performance. So we started out with 22,000. We we had estimated we were going to get 5,000 in cash sales. We didn't. We only got 4,500, so we're going to put that here. We estimated we were going to collect 14,000, and we didn't, so we put that here. So you can see already our projections were way too optimistic. What this allows us to do is then in the future as we forecast, we can say, well, you know what, even though we have these invoices outstanding, I know that sometimes people hold payment, they don't pay, we might have to do some collections, so I'm going to put this down to 12000 right? So we can be more realistic going forward. And then we, we come down here, we check out our other expenses we had, and we get, this is like a real snapshot. Now, after we figure out what our real snapshot is, then we can make some decisions about if we want to update our numbers in the cash flow um, the 13 week cash flow forecast here. After we do that, then all we're going to do is we're going to roll everything backwards. So we're going to take these numbers here, and we can just copy them, and we're going to paste them over here, and we're going to do that. So we're going to shift all of the numbers to the left so that what was week one is now in history. You can print out a PDF of this or save a copy of it if you want to have a historical record. Now week, um, so week one, well, week two is going to become week one, week three is going to become week two, et cetera, and you're going to have a blank week 13. And this is where then you go back and you fill it out again. So basically every week what you're doing is you're filling out the actual and you're filling out the 13th week. Now, in, this, in the situation where you see a cash shortfall, right, if you see these negative numbers down here, if it turns red, this is a problem. This means you're, you're going to run out of oxygen soon. And so here's what to do in a cash shortfall. I have 10 different suggestions here right? Number one is to get out there, do some business development, make more sales, close new deals, and make sure you collect that money up front. So this is number two. This is what I teach my clients to do is give them strategies for actually collecting the money ahead of time, not just a retainer, but actually getting paid in advance. So you collect that cash sale up front. That's going to help out your cash flow. Number three, you can call up any outstanding accounts receivable. You can call up people that owe you money and try to collect on that, right? That'll bring in cash. Number four, you can accelerate the invoicing cycle. Instead of sending out invoices once a month, you can sell, send them out twice a month. This is going to speed up the way cash is coming into your business. Number five, you can reduce operating expenses. So a lot of times in recessions or down markets, this is the go-to thing is take a look at operating expenses. Now, your primary expenses are going to be payroll. That's going to be your number one expense. And then you're probably going to have a rent expense and insurance expense and other things like that. So first of all, you want to cut out the fringe expenses, going out to lunch, having massages for everyone in the office, you know, the gym memberships, that's going to get axed if we're finding out that we're running out of cash. Next, we want to reduce employee hours, hours, and salaries. Now, just a quick note on all these solutions right here. If you are running native cash flow, if you see that you're forecasting native cash flow, this is... Uh, telling you that there's underlying problems with your business structure. There's something that is amiss with how, how you're selling the architectural services, how you're delivering them. It's basically giving you a temperature reading that telling you something is wrong. So if that's the case, you need to bring in a consultant, someone like myself, or someone who can actually diagnose what's happening in your business and find the solution. Because these things are just band-aids right here, right? But ultimately what you want to do is you want to find the fix. All right, so let's continue. Now, worst case scenario, you have to lay off staff. This is going to be a judgment call on your on your part. We definitely don't want to take on debt if we have excess staff and excess capacity. We want to be able to reduce that and lay off staff first. Marketing and business development, improving the business, these things should be the last thing to be cut. So too many times I see architecture firms, when they run into a cash flow crisis or a recession, they instantly cut. They think, oh, let's cut our marketing budget. We're going to cut spending. We're going to cut business development. And that just hamstrings them. That just makes them ineffective in the future. So when finally times become good again, they've cut so much. They've cut the fat, they've cut the muscle, they've cut the bone. They've amputated two legs and it's really hard to cross the finish line or even compete in a race if you're racing with your arms. Number six, you can delay capital purchases. You know, if you're going to buy something expensive, you can hold off on that. Number seven, negotiate or delay payments to vendors. So you may have a chat with your landlord saying, hey, this is a situation we're in. Can you help us out with this? You can also, I mean, if you're the firm owner, you can cut down on your personal expenses, right? And negotiate your personal payments. Number eight is to get financing or credit. Get a line of credit, go to the bank, get a business loan, get some money to be able to finance the shortfall. 
This is something that I find architecture firm owners are hesitant to do. But if you think about all the best businesses in the world, they use other people's money to grow their businesses. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to use credit and financing to cover over some systematic problems, some systemic problems in the business. And that's why I'm saying first we need to actually identify what's causing this to happen. And then when we know we have a, a sound and healthy business, it's, not, it's a no-brainer to be able to get financing and credit to cover any shortfalls or to help fund growth. Number nine, sell assets. You can sell that Harley Davidson. You can you know, sell the fancy shoes, the new crocodile lizard skin boots you bought. Uh, number 10, you can raise money from investors. Now, again, for a free training on running a practice that doesn't get in the way of your craft and success as an architect, you can visit dreampracticewebinar.com. All right, so that's it for the video today. Go ahead and I hope the, you know, this 13 week cash flow really helps you out to maintain your cash flow. This is again, something you want to do on a weekly basis. And if you have any questions about this, you can visit businessofarchitecture.com, go to the contact page, drop me a note and look forward to hearing from you. As always, this is Enix here signing off and reminding you, carpe diem.